And the vintage airplane owned by the Massachusetts-based Collings Foundation was carrying 13 people, 10 sightseers, and three crew members. The pilot, the co-pilot, and five passengers died, and the one surviving crew member told investigators he doesn't know what went wrong with the plane. This is not the NTSB's final report on the crash. That comes much later, but the documents tell a gripping story of the crash and its aftermath. According to the documents released by the NTSB, the surviving passengers told investigators they were not given instructions of any kind when boarding the vintage B-17 bomber, even regarding how to put on the seat belts. No pre-flight briefing, no instruction on what to do or how to exit the plane in an emergency. And witnesses said it was clear there was a mechanical problem before takeoff. The one surviving crew member, mechanic Mike Melton, gave investigators a picture of what happened when they did take off. As soon as I came back up to the front, he said, I put my headset back on and Mac, referring to pilot Ernest McCauley, said number four is losing power. Melton describes a brief discussion and then he said he wanted to cage it. I wasn't ready to cage it. I told him because we weren't climbing and I don't know why he reached up, caged it. And caging means shutting the engine off. And later he said, I don't know what happened. I don't know if Mac froze. Melton said he went to the nose and the tail to make sure passengers were seated and buckled in then returned to the cockpit. I don't remember it ever backfiring, he says. It all happened so fast. I don't remember ever hearing it backfire, nothing. I just looked up at the RPM gauge and it was dropping power. But as far as running rough, I do not remember. Melton said he sat down between the pilot and the co-pilot, and that's the last thing he remembers. Statements from surviving passengers give a chilling glimpse of the crash. One wrote, shortly after the plane hit the lights, it landed, and I thought we were all going to be safe. However, the plane then abruptly turned to the right, and we crashed. And another talked about the immediate aftermath of the crash. It was extremely hot, and I knew the plane was on fire. I saw light toward the rear of the plane from the open hatch, and I knew that I needed to make my way in that direction. I crawled along the floor to the hatch and jumped out into the fire and aviation fuel that was on the ground. My pants and shirt were on fire. And another from this passenger who found his friend on fire seconds after the crash. I had backed away from the aircraft as I could not take the heat any longer. When I saw him exit, I yelled to him to come to me as I could not get any closer. He made his way in my direction, at which time I began to rip his burning clothing from his body. Now, the Collings Foundation was operating the plane under the FAA's living history exemption but that has been revoked and the foundation faces several lawsuits over the crash. And as we said, we are still waiting for the NTSB's final report on the cause of that crash.